In preparation for doing your own model of photosynthesis, we're going to take a close-up look at what takes place with just one water molecule. We're zoomed in on the cell of a leaf in a, uh, any plant that's doing photosynthesis. I'm going to look at what happens when light energy strikes a water molecule. The light strikes the water molecule and splits the water, transforming it from a molecule into three atoms. And those atoms are two highly charged hydrogen and one oxygen atom that's unstable being by itself. Let's look again at what happens now looking at two water molecules. And in the presence of the pigment, when light energy strikes those two water molecules, it splits them into their component atoms. So we have then a reaction between the two oxygen atoms. They form oxygen gas, a molecule. And that gas is what we often think of when we think about what plants do when photosynthesis takes place. They produce oxygen. That oxygen is the result of the split water. In addition to oxygen gas in the leaf, there's also carbon dioxide in the leaf because gases flow freely in and out of the leaf through the stomata. So carbon dioxide gas that's inside of the leaf is available to react with our highly charged hydrogen atoms. The hydrogen atoms together are able to strip an oxygen off of the carbon dioxide molecule. So now they, we have a water molecule again used with that oxygen and an unstable carbon and oxygen combination that then reacts with hydrogen atoms again forming a sugar building block. So the sugar building block is a carbon, two hydrogens, and an oxygen. And we've produced oxygen gas and a water molecule. Some of the energy in light that reached the leaf split the water molecule and transform that water molecule into high energy hydrogen atoms and an oxygen atom. Those high energy hydrogen atoms then reacted with carbon dioxide, changing it into a sugar that contains high energy carbon and hydrogen bonds. Those carbon hydrogen bonds then can be stored and used by the plant or used by anything that eats the plant. When two sugar building blocks molecules are combined, they can go through a reaction to form a more complex sugar, and that, that process can be repeated to form more and more complex sugars. That's what the plant's body is made out of, and also what the plant uses for matter and energy to live. Now we're going to take a look at of zooming out a little bit to look at the whole model, the whole system that the plant water molecules in the groundwater of the river are absorbed into the ground and then picked up by the roots of the tree and absorbed into the leaves. So then we see that's how water molecules end up in the cells of the leaves and available for photosynthesis. So in this example we're going to bring four water molecules into the leaf zoom in. And in the atmosphere zoom in, you can see that there's carbon dioxide, there's oxygen, there are water vapor, there's other things too, nitrogen and other gases, but we're focusing on primarily carbon dioxide and oxygen and water vapor. And again, the, these are in the gaseous form. They're molecules that move in and out of the cells um, freely in the leaf. When light energy then strikes the leaves, is absorbed by the leaves in the presence of pigments. The transformation again takes place like we saw before where water is, is split. Each water molecule is split by the energy from the light to its atoms that make up the water and we again have highly charged hydrogen atoms and oxygen atoms that are single and those oxygen atoms are not stable as a single atom. So they will react with each other and form oxygen gas molecules. The oxygen gas diffuses out of the leaf and into the atmosphere. Just like the carbon dioxide and oxygen can come into the leaf, they also can diffuse out of the leaf. 
And now inside the leaf, what we see here are highly charged hydrogen atoms that can react with the carbon dioxide molecules. Those highly charged hydrogen atoms are powerful enough to be able to strip an oxygen off of a carbon dioxide and form a stable water molecule and leave behind a carbon and an oxygen bonded together that are unstable. Highly charged hydrogen atoms then move in and react with the carbon and oxygen that are left behind, forming a sugar building block that can then be used for matter and energy or combine to build more complex molecules that the plant needs either to build its structures or to use for food and energy. When sugars are combined to make a more complex sugar, sometimes the plant stores that in the root or uh, some other structure where it's available for use later.